Hello, I got the box for a tov. Recently, I posted a picture from Rav Noah David Isaacovich is a mimer, a 31-page mimer on the Simone Techelazon. What is the Chilazon to the Techelaz? Now, in this mimer, uh, he explains very good. He goes through 21 simonim of Chazal, and hopefully he's going to put up another one of other simonim that are brought in the Bishonim, in the Goonim, of what uh, what it looks like. But I'm going to just, so somebody wrote me a comment, and uh, he says, "What kind of what is this?" There's, in the same space that put this up, they wrote a a mimer, a teguvel, is there, uh, trying to answer up all the questions. On uh, on, Rav, uh, on this mimer from Rav Noach David uh, Isaacovich. Now, I looked at the mimer. I, I knew there was a teguva to it, but I've been learning the sugi of techelas maybe quite a number of years, eight nine years maybe, and I know all the answers they have. And I looked through it a little bit, and I didn't. It wasn't well written. There's 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 fade in him on these kind of things. It has to be well written. And of course, it has to have content. It didn't seem to be well written. And another thing about this mimer, it was anonymous. Generally, I don't read, I don't pick up anonymous things. There's alonim in the, sh- alonim in the shul. I don't usually, if they're anonymous, I don't pick them up. And once somebody brought a whole stack of sforim to to my the main shul, I daven in, Imre Sheffer, and uh, the whole stack is for him. They're completely anonymous. They brought, first of all, it was illegal to bring them. There's a big sign in the shul, Asur Levi Svorim Lebeit Knesset. People, you know, they finish the Svorim, and, you know, they, or they print Svorim, and nobody buys them, or nobody, they're all Malaka, they put them in shuls. And uh, so they brought a whole bunch of books, anonymous books, so which the Gabai, Arav Spitzer, uh, usually throws out, and sometimes he gets very upset about it also, as much as a Sadiq or a Spitzer can upset. But Kitzer, but Kitzer, he wrote a whole Hakdama, why he's writing the book Anonymous, which I, I, I this I already looked at, and okay, Lomashane, Akshav, but this is an anonymous mimer. Now, why is it not well written? Is a teguva to Rabbi Zakovich. So what he should do, if he wants, is go through the 21 simanim, which is, by the way, the picture of this video here, is is a picture that I put up of two other videos, one in Hebrew, one in English, about this, well, uh, about this, about uh, with this chart. Now, so I hope he would go through the 21 and explain it. Now, I've been learning this with you for quite a while, and I know. Quite a lot of the Terutzin. I'll give you a couple that I've seen. I didn't look, I, I branched through, I didn't see anything special, anything new, but I'll tell you. The simon number one, Gufo do Miliam. I think Rashi and other people say it's blue. Now, at one point, I put up on um, Facebook, which I don't use McClaw, and I don't look at it McClaw, but, uh, but I put up there for some reason because it's a beautiful picture. The picture, the way the Pasil Techel is, well, wait a minute, again. Guval Domliam, it means it's blue, according to Washington Shorty. Now, they printed up uh, Chover at the Pasil Techelis people, I believe they're in Efrat. And, uh, and, uh, and the uh, Murex is blue. Complete Photoshop, a complete lie. It's white. And I printed the two pictures together. And, and, uh, so, just to see, just to show what they're doing. The kids, sir, uh, the Murex doesn't, is not blue. That's sim number one. Bryso Domel, a dog. Now, it's a snail, with like a regular snail we find in our gardens, in our backyards. Now, uh, nobody really did this, but there's a fellow, his name is, is, what's his name? One second. There's a fellow title bomb, I forget his first name. He claims to sit to, to learn in the Mir Yeshiva. So he wrote a very big book 
I think it's a big book, I don't know. He didn't want to send it to me, he thinks I should buy it. Everybody else that I spoke to that put out the Choveritz, very gratefully, and I thank them all that sent me their Choveritz and their Maimorim on Tachelis. A title bomb didn't want to send it to me. Okay, if he's selling it, making money, and he doesn't want to send it to me, but I've never seen the bookstores, I don't know that he's selling it, making money. But kids, he didn't send it to me, but he brings a picture, an outline of a tehillah held in a, of a murex held in a certain way, and he says, "Wow, it's doma to a fish." Now, uh, yeah, it's if anybody ever took a warshach, what's it called, ink blot test, you know, they, they show you an ink blot and they say, "What does it remind you of?" I took the test once, uh, not long ago, maybe fifteen years ago, somebody gave it to me. A uh, serious, professional, so-called professional person. But gets, uh, uh, so he says, doesn't this look like a dog? Okay, I ask you, if I, if I had the picture again, maybe I'll put it up if I, I don't know where, I'll put it up on my Facebook. I see I use Facebook a couple of times in the last couple of weeks, and which is maybe in the last couple, in the last year, maybe a couple of times. Let me show you, I'll put it up. What other things does he say here? Ola chad l'shivim shana. Now, one of the big people in the Tehelis people is, seems like uh, Talmud Chacham, and a very smart guy, and a chidush, he's honest, is Rav Eliyahu Tavgar, and uh, Hashkacha Pratis, but Mazel. His father-in-law lives mamash across the street from him. I didn't know it was his father-in-law, but I was davening in the shul uh, next to me, next door to me a little bit, and I saw this fellow, like, and I wearing Tehelis, so I asked him, uh, Oh, you wear tachelis? What kind of tachelis do you wear? And we started talking, and I found his name is Kaufman, Iman Elotoe, I forget his first name. And we started talking. By the way, I this I do to many people, as many people can attest. Anytime I see somebody new in shul, I dove in a central shul. A lot of people come from outside the shkuna to dove in there. And I ask them, uh, hey, what kind of tachelis are you wearing? And sometimes I start up a sikha with them, sometimes I don't start up a sikha with them. Uh, then there was a fellow who came, my mama, she wanted to talk to me, his, I forget his name. I found out he's a big mocker in the Tekelis movement. Uh, the name will come back to me, maybe. Okay, Ole Achad L'Shivim Shana. Now, Rav Tavgar, who's a very important person, says, someday brings a Gamora someplace, or a Rishon, it's not in front of me, the answer is now. Seventy sometimes means seven, which means a lot. Now seven, he he writes there is close to six, and and the, and the murex comes up every six months. How does it come up? Now the pashat of the Gomorrah comes up once every seven. It comes up by itself. It comes up they, for certain reasons because I don't know. Uh, you have to ask a biologist, a botanist, whatever it is. It comes up every seven months, every six months, and it says they come up because the divers go down and bring them up. That's what's called coming up. This is what Tavgar says. Um, it's, it's a pretty far-fetched thing they come up. Now, just as a side point, he brings here in the chart, comes up every seven years, this is number three. The other, the Rod Zin, I was told, he says, Ulai, Rav Isaacovich, and the, and the Rav Herzog fish, the Yontina, uh, does come up. They have they multiply too much and they come up to the shore occasionally. I don't know, every seven years it could be okay. Okay, let's what other things they say here. Mum Domela dot Nachash. Now if you can look at the picture, what's it called? Mum. They have mamish things coming out of the head of the of the uh, of the fish. Now this is the cuttlefish by by uh, by uh, the, the uh, Radziner fish, Mamash it has things coming out of its head that look like a nakash. Okay, now another thing, he says, Rufua lamaka befi atabat hemorrhoids. Now, uh, the rods. This is brother Gamor in 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 Aveda Zor, Daf Yud Chet Yud Zayin, somewhere around there. You can find it easily. This is brought today, and it's known that the that the, uh, uh, the 
the homeopaths do use from the cuttlefish, uh, the, uh, parts of the cuttlefish, for our uh, he- other hemorrhoids. Now, another siban that they bring, uh, this I heard from Rav Reisman's legendary cassette on Wise Against Tachelis. And by the way, I put it up on my YouTube channel. Uh, you could find it. Uh, I mean, if you're hearing this, you found it. Uh, you can look there. I think I have a playlist. That it has to be the Gomorrah in Shabbos, Daf Ayin Dalid, Amud Aleph, Ani Choshev, Berak Shama, Choliot Zebidiuk Shama. That you're Chayev if you trap a Chilazon. Now, the Chilazon doesn't, it moves, you know, very, very, very slowly. Now, there's such a din of what you're Chayev on Sida. Like, for example, a Svi. If you trap a Svi, you catch a Svi, you're Chayev. Sida is one of the Lamatis Malachos. Now, now, seeing that the Chilazon doesn't move, uh, you're not high on it, La Pashtus. It doesn't move. You can catch it. It's not Shaykh Sida, which is a very, very strong kasha. Now, and one of the Choverets that is put out here, I have in front of me, Misha Yakir, which Yadid Nafshi, one of the big, big people in the Techelis movement, uh, Davins and Imre Sheffer, my Davin, our Avtsvit Sand, who's uh, very, very involved in this, uh, he told me. Number 12 on the list is Makom Metzias Achilazon. This is the main proof of the Burek's people. They've, there's many places up in that area, by Sidon, by Tzur. They found huge, huge uh, places where they find the Achilazon shells. And, uh, they, and, and they usually have a maka where they take out the where they take out the the, the, the dom, the dom, whatever it is. The, 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 maybe it's not dom. It's also, you read Isaac Kovach's is Sefer, you'll see exactly what it is. And they find it. This is a big proof. There was an industry in Sidon, in Sur, where they did the Tehelis. Now, this is very pursued. I heard, when I first heard of Tehelis, Rabbi Mori, our Avudale Frank, wore Tachelis, and his Shver of Shul Shapiro wore Tachelis. They wore Razin Tachelis, and he made lit sonus of it, of this thing. It's the, it's the Argamon. Ar- these are the Argamon, the Mur. Ah, oh, this is another point here. It's not, I don't think Rabbi Isaac would talk about it. The Argamon is known. Everybody agrees, even the fellow there, Dr. Strumer, told me when I first knew, I didn't, you know, I didn't know too much, and I spoke to him a few years ago about this, the Argon, but they don't talk about this, but the Argamon comes from the, it's a purple dye, comes from the, comes from the mirrors. Now, a tremendous chutzpah, and Magale Pani Batora, it's a Sheker Gamor, this fellow Teitelbaum that I mentioned a few minutes ago, who didn't want to send me his book, he claims he found in the books of Poloni, Polonius Hazakein, a elder, something like this, a Greek botanist, that the that the Argamon and the Techelis come from the same uh, creature. Now he brought a few sources there in Greek, which I didn't understand. Now, Baruch Hashem, Yedid Nafshi Arav David Shapiro, Shiabari. Uh, the wife of the good fa- Lomashane, his wife is a famous lady in her own right. He wrote, uh, I asked him, he knows Greek, he's a very learned person. And I sent him the Makorot that Title Bomb brings. And he looked it up. Lo I Avaloni Ra, the word that he, he mistranslates the word that has something, it's a little bit, it's only two or three letters off, but it's not what it says. And he made a big mistake. I called up Teitelbaum and told him, look, I have a friend who knows Greek. This is not what it means. By the way, how did I, I say he didn't want to send me his book, Teitelbaum? How did I found it? The going, a uh, very fine person I spoke to quite a few times, Harav Yitzhak Brand, brings it in his mind. And take it. As I said a few minutes ago, I read a number of years ago, I read everything at the He brings this. That's how I knew about this, this big hamsa'ah 
from Title Bomb that are the same fish. But kids, sir, Title Bomb told me, it's a little mistake. I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you. I'm still waiting. It's a mistake. It could be it's a lie. It's a Magali Pani Bator. I'm a Pergibos, what this means. Okay, it's taking longer than I thought here. Just let me say one other thing. I don't know if it's on the list now, but there's another thing that I saw somebody else pointed out to me. I don't know if it's on the list. That you potsia the chilazon yechayev potsia. Is it on the list? Oh yeah, it is on the list here. It's number eighteen on the list. Uh, potsia. What it means is that you have to to pots, to get out the the drop of uh, to get out the dye. You have to make a wound in the chilazon. Now uh, he doesn't. He, the the murex doesn't have. Ah, so what is the murex? To get it out, of course it has to get out. It comes out a drop from each murex. Now, a drop from each murex means that uh, there's not a shear. You're not chayev in Petzia if it only comes out a drop. Yeah, it's another, another slug up. Now this, I haven't seen an answer. Now, most of, many of the things they bring there, they bring answers. Now, this fellow in B'nai Brock, I, started, I think I started to say the fellow in B'nai Brock, when I finished it, he, I called him up, he, they, brought, they bring him in this book here, Mishayaki, Mishayaki, collection of my morning. He told me about the uh, Reisman's Kasha, that anything that doesn't want to be caught, you're not, you're, you're Chayavan. Which, uh, I don't think this is Fi Shavur, with a broken leg that can't escape. It doesn't make sense, but this fellow, I spoke to him for quite a few minutes, and he seems like a very fine person. I don't remember his name now, but his, his, you can find the, in the list of people here in Mishiach here, uh, you can find it. So this, it doesn't have a shear. And Seva Shemu, ah, another thing here. Seva Miskaya. Now this is not so clear at all. Rav Baron. Forget his name, Baron and Beit Shemesh. He has a very, very good video about this, about supporting. He's a big Hasid of the of the uh, Radzin Techelis. And he brings Bokorod that is not Makayan. It's a car, it's a Makhlok. I don't know, I can't speak about it now. I'm not Bucky in the sources offhand. I know that's, I've seen he brings it here. Now, another thing, our Rav Cheshen, um, and one of the Gadoli Hasidi Breslov told me just a couple of days ago, we were talking about many things, and he brought, he told me that the Radzin, there's a fellow in Breslov now, his name is Ara Brown, he's a son or a nechad of the legendary Asher Ansel Brown from Toldosorin, who was a soifer, I have a and a tzaddik very much, I was a in the days when I was a bucker to eat by him on Shabbos, and my good friend Yonatan also was close to him. He ate by him on Shabbos. He was a big machni soreach. And he wrote the Siddur, the first Siddur that ever came out, Kasuv Ashuri Siddur. The kids are his son or grandson. I'm really, I don't get the breast off too much lately. I'm in low mood calm. Put out, uh, he put out a new techelis. No, not a new techelis, the Radzin techelis from the same recipe that they, that I think Rav Herzog uh, got the recipe from the Razina Rebbe back uh, whenever it was, 100 years ago, uh, 80 years ago, whatever, a long time. And uh, it's supposed to be much stronger and Makaya much better. And, uh, and uh, unfortunately, it, this workshop burned down. I was told by Rav Cheshen, that it could be in the store, the Breslov store, where they sell business, business, they sell both kinds of techelis there, the Murex for 220 shekels, and the Radzin, I'm blessed, I'm, I think it was 40 shekels, but they were selling the new rods in there, I don't know exactly, um, look it up. Okay, these are the, a few points I want to answer to our Rav Cheshen, who from Toronto, my family is also, I'm born in Montreal. Family was very well, you do it there. They opened the Jewish hospital. They made the Jewish newspaper. They printed the first Shas, my family, in North America. In 1930, they printed the Montreal Shas. Well, I'm also connected with Canada. This is for you, Rev Hecht, 
who wrote me a few comments, and he's from Toronto, and uh, beam me like I said before. Since I don't know how to write, I don't have a computer. I have an ancient iPhone and not so ancient Android phone, and that's how I run my YouTube channel, and that's how I look at things. Uh, again, I hope I didn't bore anybody. I hope uh, you. This is mainly for you, Araf Hecht. That the Abbasur's Toivos, the Litrot, the Kultov. One more thing I want to add on that I was in touch with this. It's a Sotmer journal where this was printed. Uh, Kibbutz Guinness of Radim. And I we got in touch with them. I was so impressed with this article, 30 page article. And they told me, uh, I, didn't, I wasn't so glad to speak to Rabbi Isaacovich, but I spoke to his friend and editor of the journal. He says they have a new, a new copy out. Six, they expanded this 60 pages. Now, he sent it to me, and I sent it. I spoke to uh, Dr. Stroom of Efrat, the head of the organization, and he said he'd put it up. I don't think he put it up yet, but uh, hopefully, it was, this was already two years ago, maybe. I hope he'll put it up. Maybe he didn't put it up. I couldn't find it. He said he was going to put it up, the expanded version of this. Okay, again, and Kultov, Kulanu, bye.